Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We have quite the video for you guys this morning. Um, four really interesting stories. Uh, some of them kind of funny, some of them actually quite serious, including the potential of a brand new feature coming to Nintendo Switch that honestly is one of the key features from the new Xbox platforms. That being said, before we get into it, I gotta remind you, we are giving away three copies of Metroid Dread for Dreadtober, baby. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed. Uh, we will probably have some sort of event at the end of the month to announce the winners, but yeah, stay tuned. We have a few banger live streams for you this week. We'll get into that towards the end of the video. Until then, let's get right into today's Nintendo news. All right, so our first one deals with this thing back here. You know, that big Sakurai Presents happening tomorrow. That's right, we're like less than 24 hours away at this point. I'm honestly really looking forward to this event. It is the final character unveiling. We will obviously be live streaming that event. We'll do a one hour pre-show leading into it and have a whole bunch of fun with it. It happens nice and early in the morning at 9 a.m. CT. But Sakurai has gone out on Twitter to, I guess, advertise the event, but he did it in a way that I find quite interesting. So here are the exact quotes that he put out on Twitter today. He said, in just one day, the last fighter of Smash Bros. Ultimate will be announced. Even if you don't play the game, if you're interested in gaming, I'd like to recommend you watch it. The new fighter may be a character that you don't know or different from what you expected, but I hope you enjoy the broadcast itself, and I had fun recording it. Obviously, this is you know just marketing to campaign or remind people that this is happening tomorrow, not that us Nintendo fans really need reminding that the last Smash character gets announced tomorrow. I find it interesting because he's saying even if you don't play, you know, play the game or don't you know that you should watch this. I, I find that to be an interesting remark because it makes me wonder: is this going to be a significantly popular? character and then he goes on to mention that hey it might be a character you don't know so it, it's going to be really interesting to see what this character is I, I don't think you know we could try to read between the lines on his tweets here and and try to infer something from it honestly we're less than 24 hours away from actually knowing ourselves so what the hell is the point of even attempting to do that at this point uh tomorrow during our pre-show i will be going through every single new character that was added to smash bros ultimate whether it was as dlc or just included in the base game at launch uh, because i think it's nice to look back at all the characters that sakurai and the rest of the team have added to super smash bros ultimate in comparison to prior smash games uh, and then go from there to maybe you know see if there's some sort of pattern something we can maybe project into what to expect during the event again i don't really know what to expect um it, there's a lot of different ways you can go it, will it be a nintendo character will it be third party if you look at the pattern it should be nintendo but then again patterns are made to be broken so it is what it is uh we'll have to wait and see but i'm really excited for this event it's 40 minutes long which i mean i guess every sakurai presents is around that long but um i also feel like maybe sakurai is potentially pushing this because this is speculation but maybe he's about to step away from the smash series for good um and so that's why maybe he's like hey even if you don't play like if you follow me on twitter watch the damn thing because this is like a culmination of maybe his life's work on super smash bros um so he might want to be like hey come watch the swan song which he's not officially announcing is his swan song for smash but it very well might be so we'll have to wait and see uh, but I'm really excited for this event, and hey, it's one of many events happening in October for Nintendo. So our next story is more of a PSA. For starters, obviously Metroid Dread, you guys see it back here, uh, that comes out this Friday. My pre-order is completely paid off, I'll be live streaming, picking up the game, and another, um, you know, Switch OLED, that's right, I got another one coming. Um, but anyways, uh, so I'll have a live stream picking all that up, but here's the thing. Here's what matters most. Metroid Dread is leaked. That's right, like pretty much every major Nintendo game, it has leaked to the internet. Um, a ROM files have come out, uh, but beyond the ROM files, obviously people that have the game early, whether it fell off a truck or they're just media members who don't give a hoot, 
have been basically leaking the entire game. 100% playthroughs of the entire game are basically available online right now. Nintendo has been striking now most of the videos that appear on popular places such as YouTube, uh, but reality is it is out there. Uh, I just wanted to kind of put this as a PSA to, hey, avoid spoilers. Uh, if that's something that you're worried about with this game, not everybody cares as much about spoilers. I usually don't care as much about them, uh, but even I want to maybe go into this one with a bit more of a fresh perspective. I will note that uh, it's really not that hard to avoid the spoilers. I would say as long as you're not watching any videos that literally are spoilers, you're not going to get spoiled too bad. Um, I would go uh, as far as to say the embargo date lifts on October 6th. That's when we're going to get reviews and all that jazz. So I would just look to more official channels or right here at Nintendo Prime. We're not we're not going to show any leaks footage here. Uh, so like, yeah, just take the more official channels or YouTubers that you trust not to leak this stuff to you um, and just kind of avoid anything else. If it comes from a YouTube channel or a user that you don't recognize, just don't watch the video because you might get completely spoiled um, unless you just don't care. Again, I'm not going to link you to any of the spoilers. Just know they're out there. If you are interested in it, just use Google. It's really not that hard to find them. Um, you, there, there is some pretty neat stuff in it, but again, I'm not going to go over any of because I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. Uh, the game comes out Friday. So, Hey, you know, we'll probably end up doing a launch stream for it as well, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So this is more of a funny story. You might see it back behind me. If it doesn't look good, I'll put up a bigger image of it. But basically, Nintendo of France tweeted something out yesterday that they shouldn't have. We can call this another oopsie by a Nintendo employee. Um, as you can see, uh, it is an old um, advertising photo that had Samus and um, Solid Snake crawling. And this is where, like, you know, Solid Snake would be crawling up to, like, you know, perform some sort of, um, you know, knockout move or something like that from the Metal Gear series. Uh, and it was originally part of official marketing material some time ago. Uh, but Nintendo of France tweeted this out and then had to put the emoji eyes for really no reason. This is a really old marketing piece. There really was no logical reason to tweet this out. It doesn't really advertise the Sakurai Presents. And when you throw the emoji eyes in there, it sort of makes it look like you're, you know, doing one of those, ooh, ooh, what's going on here with like Snake potentially checking out. Samus Aran's rear end. Um, clearly not something that was going to be approved by upper management at Nintendo, even in France. Uh, and by the way, they usually don't tweet out on weekends anyways. So it was most likely a rogue employee. The tweet was quickly deleted. Um, there is a running theory that some of the guy probably or the lady or whoever did this probably lost their job. I'm not so sure. They, I kind of lean towards, you know, maybe Nintendo might be a little lenient on it. Maybe not. Um, Nintendo does like to present a certain family first image uh, on their social media platforms, unless there's specific warnings for things like Bayonetta and stuff like that. And it's not like Nintendo has shied away from um, rear ends. Um, they, have, they have quite a few games that um, kind of accentuate that part of the human form, uh, but, that's within the games of proper age ratings, you know, like Bayonetta 3 and stuff like that. There's all these pro proper channels to go through. Um, but honestly, it, it, it's kind of some innocent fun that the internet was having yesterday. <sighs> but still, like, you have to think of the back of your mind. Someone might have lost their job over this. Was it really worth it for that? Maybe they were getting fired anyways, so they just decided to screw it. Um, but whatever, it was a little bit of fun the internet was having yesterday, especially over on Twitter. All right, so our last story, which is really the big story of this video, um, is about this back here. Now, no, Xbox, we're not going back into the old Xbox rumors and Game Pass and all that coming to Nintendo Switch. Obviously, uh, we have no idea what, if anything, ever comes of that partnership. But uh, Nintendo had a new patent get filed. And no, this isn't the one about 4K DLSS upscaling and all that jazz. That one's have anything to do with this. That would be more like dealing with NVIDIA. And we talked about that last week. That's a legit patent. It does exist. Nintendo is investing some sort of uh, research the last 18 months into using DLSS in their video games. That's really cool. And I hope that comes to fruition as something they add, if not to the current Switch to or Switch OLED to future platforms. But here's the thing. Nintendo files lots of patents. And sometimes these patents come out and come true 
especially when they're something that's a feature. Uh, maybe not necessarily patents for devices. Certain device patents don't really mean much. You've had device patents for weird Mario Kart crap in the past. But how about a patent for a key feature that is still, as of now, exclusive to Xbox? You guys know about Quick Resume? Quick Resume is a really neat feature on Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X that lets you just quickly swap between games and it just literally you start up right where you left off after a few seconds of load. It's quite convenient for people who like to hop around games. Um, and on Switch, I actually find I probably hop around games the most. It's not so hard to switch between games, but there's no save state feature. So like you got to save your game and, and, and every time you load the game, it has to completely close a different game to load a new one. That's not how it works on Xbox. You can just literally you can have multiple games just kind of loaded in the memory and whichever one you're playing currently is the one on screen. So here's the thing. Nintendo had this really interesting patent get filed and here's the interesting text. I will put a link to the patent in the description, a link to all of our stories in the description, um, except for the deleted tweet from, from friends. I, I, it's deleted, what do you want me to do? Um, I guess I can link to my tweet where I talked about it. Here's the thing. In a game apparatus in which game programs for a plurality of games, each including a title scene and a play scene are stored in a storage medium. A game can be executed, is switched in a predetermined order by a user operating a first input device. At a time of the switching, in this case, where a currently executed game is in a play scene, the game is interrupted and switching is performed to another game. And when the game is executed again later, the game is restarted, from the time of the interruption of the play scene and a first image showing the game is displayed on the display meanwhile in the case where the currently executed game is in the title scene switching is performed to another game and then when the game is executed again the game is restarted from the title scene without displaying the first image in other words it's a lot of jargon and there's a lot more jargon in there essentially um you know a quick resume has like this little quick menu on the left Switch doesn't have anything like that, so it would be more like a title screen kind of thing. So it'd be like a startup menu title screen, and then you could like choose from there. Um, but it's very, very similar in how Quick Resume works. Um, obviously, it's going to work in a slightly different way. You can never have things work exactly the same as it does on other platforms. There are certain patents and stuff around all that. Uh, so Nintendo's patenting their own way, just like they are with their their version of DLSS. Nintendo is always going to look to not, not necessarily just use what exists out there, but try to do it in their own way so then, you know, it's slightly different or better or something. Um, I would argue like voice chat on phones is probably worse, but, you know, Nintendo has ideas that sometimes pan out. So what I really like about this patent and when you combine it with prior patents about DLSS is that Nintendo seems to be looking into modern features. Now, again, these features might not ever come to the current Switch or the Switch OLED, but they definitely could be coming to say Switch 2 or whatever their next generation platform is. So I find this to be highly fascinating that, to see that Nintendo is actually researching modern features to the point where they're not just looking at it, they're patenting it to potentially use. Now again, not all patents come true. A lot of times these software feature patents end up do coming true. The hardware ones don't, like the supplemental computing device uh, or even stuff they announce like the Wii Vitality sensor. In the end, a lot of the hardware ones don't necessarily come true, but the software ones, the feature ones, often do have um, at least a much higher percentage chance of coming out. So that's why the DLSS one is pretty interesting because that's obviously, yeah, there's some hardware there, but also software based. And then obviously this one with quick resume. Again, Nintendo looking to add modern features is never anything but a positive sign for us as gamers because we would like Nintendo to not ignore what's happening in the rest of the gaming world. I understand some of you guys want some super souped up 16 teraflop crazy arse home console gaming Nintendo machine that will probably never exist. And I, I understand the desire for that sort of modern technology or modern online infrastructure. I think we can all agree that's something Nintendo desperately needs. But at least Nintendo's looking into modern features. And if they can find a way to keep it maybe in the form factor of Switch where it's a hybrid system, but able to add in some of this modern stuff moving forward, I would greatly appreciate that. I use Quick Resume much more than I thought I would. Because um, once you start using it, it just kind of becomes natural. And you wonder, how the hell didn't we have this before? Why do we always have to close games and start up new games? and lose save spots and like why couldn't we do this for years 
technology for it's been around for a while. Why did it take so long? Well, Nintendo's looking into it, so that's a good sign. Um, so, yep. I don't know. That's my thoughts right now. You guys let me know what you think about all this news down in the comments below. Now, I did mention I want to mention uh, a bit of a streaming schedule this week. So, here's the lowdown on what's happening. We will be streaming tonight um, at 8 or 9 p.m. Central Time. I haven't decided which time slot yet. I will get the stream set up here um, in the early afternoon hours. I'm also going to need a stream set up for tomorrow for Sakurai Presents. Um, and then I got to get another stream set up. This is kind of crazy. We're streaming three days in a row uh, because we will have the Nintendo Prime podcast streaming this Wednesday. And I can already tell you our podcast guest for this week is going to be Andres Restart. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but if you don't, you'll meet him. And he's a really, really cool dude. And we have a lot to talk about here because we have, hey, Metroid Dread and Switch OLED launching this week. Kind of a big deal. Uh, and then uh, we will have another live stream happening on Friday. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get that stream set up ahead of time quite yet. I might wait till Wednesday to set up that stream uh, just because I want to I want to kind of make sure that I don't overload you guys with, you know, the new stream setups. But anyways, that's what I got for you now. Um, I'm still working on a few more Switch OLED videos as well. I have my, I would guess you could quote to say final impressions of that system under works uh, and answering some of your guys' questions as well. If you have any questions about Switch OLED that you don't feel have been answered adequately yet by anybody, let me know down in the comments as well and I will do my best to include them in my final impressions video because I want to be as thorough as I can, as honest as I can, um, and obviously maybe comp to a few mistakes I've made in my coverage. Um, hello, Megabit versus Megabyte. Yeah, I know, I'm not dumb, I read comments. All right, folks, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.